So Netflix normally does a really good job of a book to movie adaptation and the fact that they themselves have put out in partnership with Starbucks um, a sort of book to movie adaptation series talking about this um, adaptation itself um, surely is a sign of a good thing. Let's see. Welcome back, or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Katrina. I make bookish content here on this channel every week and then movie reviews here at the weekend. In the description box below, you will find all of my social links, including my blog, my Goodreads, where I review most of the books that I read. I will leave a playlist of my book versus movie videos linked up above. Um, and as always, I recognize that when an author signs over the rights or sells the rights to their book, um, um, it means that the movie studios or the TV producing companies can do with it what they want. I am not expecting every movie adaptation of a book to be like for like, but I like finding the similarities and differences and bringing them to you here. So today we are going to be talking about Passing by Nella Larson, which was just adapted for Netflix. Um, it came out, I believe, the 9th of November, um, and it stars Tessa Thompson, and it is um, created by Rebecca Hall. Um, I've watched quite a few interviews with uh, Rebecca Hall talking about this and she is clearly a massive fan of the book and so I think that that really helps bring about this adaptation. Um, and it is one of those that is pretty much closely linked and closely relates to the book itself. I think it helps that this book came out in 1929 is quite a short book and so they've similarly made quite a short film and I think when you have a super super long book that's been made into like a 90 minute film I think that's when we start to run into trouble because you're not going to get the entire essence of a really long like 400 500 page novel into one 90 minute film or even one two hour film whereas this book I listened to the audio and I think it was like around about the four hour mark um, and then the film itself is just over an hour and a half and so I think it really fits well and translates well from book to movie. Um, the film talks about um, it's set in 1920s mostly Harlem but based in and around New York um, and talks about two friends one of whom um, chooses to live her life passing as white as a black person passing as white and the other chooses to live her life as a black person and um, there is a lot of discussion between these two friends um, and also between the uh, character played by, I want to say Irene, um, played by Tessa Thompson and her husband. Um, and they just, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of discussion in the book. And I think that's what helps make it an almost like for like adaptation of a book to movie. Because in the book, there's a lot of conversation, a lot of discussion, a lot of the scenes are just two people talking. And um, so that translates well to screen because we can have two people talking it's not like oh we have to go on this epic journey and we have to have this action scene and we have to have this slow build romance it's two people talking and it's talking about their identity now what i think the film has done really well is rebecca hall thought and decided that she had to shoot this film in black and white and it is also in four by three so the black and white fact of the film um really helps the fact that this book talks about colour and identity and so by taking away the colour in the film it's just you get to the essence of the discussion without being distracted by a whole lot of other things around and then by putting it in 4.3 we also have this kind of like intense feeling we are really inside these characters heads just like you are in the book um, one of the interviews that I saw Rebecca Hall talking about the film, she says that she keeps thinking that the book itself is written in the first person when it's not. It's written in the third person. But thinking back on it, when I read the book, almost directly before watching the film, um, I kind of remember it as being in the first person because it's just, you get so inside the head of Irene and so sort of into her world that you feel like she is talking directly at you when you're reading the book, but you're not. It's written 
about her it's in the third person and her conversations with Claire are in the third person and so that's really interesting I also um noticed that the black and white film really really made sort of the the textures of the scene really stand out so we have a few scenes that take place outside and then we have these kind of transitional scenes that involve kind of trees and leaves and a leafy sidewalk or a snowy sidewalk or whatever the weather might be doing in the season that we're transitioning to um, and I think that the black and white shots just really make um those sort of textures really stand out and it felt really beautiful to watch. I really wish that I could have seen this one in the cinema. Um, I think it may have had a limited release but I wasn't able to find it anywhere near me and so I watched it on my laptop um, but I think it would have been stunning to watch it in the cinema and I think that 4x3 and the black and white shooting would have just kind of stood out even more in the cinema. Um, but yeah, I I think the fact that the film talks, the book talks so much about identity and then we've made the, the these directorial choices been made to really focus in, literally focus in and focus in on these two characters and their identity. Um, it just, it just does a great job. It's really captured the essence of the book and as I sort of always do the, the comparison, a lot of the dialogue in the book is word for word dialogue in the um, movie as well. So we have l l actual lines being said that you've read in the book, which is interesting because I know that Tessa Thompson recorded an audio version of the book. I didn't end up listening to that one, um, but I wonder if my experience, I would have found them even more similar if I'd listened to that audiobook recording and not the audiobook recording that I listened to. Um, I've, I feel like the only thing that felt really different for me was that the black and white shooting um, sort of added another, another layer of um, beauty to the film and I could really appreciate the cinematography and the lighting and yeah the directorial choices um which is really interesting when you then kind of go ahead and watch interviews with Rebecca Hall because some of the choices that she made are so subtle but when you see them and when you hear the reason behind them you're like oh that's inspired just I could never do that job at all um but that that kind of is a difference for me and then the only other difference is I felt like Irene's husband almost played more of a role in the film just because you could see their interactions whereas reading the book you only sort of see it through dialogue you don't kind of see the like subtle hand touches or the expressions on their faces necessarily and so I feel like he was more three-dimensional in the film than in a book. I feel like when I read the book, he seemed more of a kind of vehicle for discussion and a vehicle to kind of get to the heart of Irene's identity and have this discussion about passing. Um, whereas in the film, he felt like more of a vital character to the story as a whole. Um, but that's, that's my main difference. And I just think that that's because in in a way you kind of like have to make him more like that in the film because he's there he's on screen he's in the scene he is a person um and so yeah I just felt like he sort of came more alive as a character um but yes I thought that the ending was done very well again always spoiler free on this channel but um if you've read the book you'll know that the ending is controversial and I thought that the choices made and the way the ending was choreographed was done really well um and yeah i will leave a link in the description box to that netflix starbucks video where they talk about the the book to screen adaptation and um rebecca hall talks about some of the choices that she made that i then fell down the rabbit hole of <laughs> watching videos where she talks about her direction of the film um but yeah i thought it was a real sort of like for like adaptation if you enjoyed the book you'll definitely enjoy the film you don't have to have read the book to watch the film and i think that if you enjoyed the film you would definitely get something from reading the book as well i do recommend the film i very much enjoyed it uh i like the fact that it wasn't super long and i like the um 
the general cinematography and the choices made by Rebecca Hall when she was making it. So, as always, if there is a book to movie adaptation that you would like to hear my thoughts on here on this channel, please do let me know. Um, but do appreciate that it takes some time to read a book and watch a show or, uh, or a movie. Um, so those will be coming if you have suggested some. Um, I will be back with more bookish content for you very soon and more movie reviews. So make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and uh, I will see you with my next video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>